Hey everyone, it's Michael Regina. Welcome back to my channel. I'm the author and illustrator of the all ages horror graphic novel, The Sleepover. And I wanted to do another video today talking about the creative life and things that I've learned as an artist. And the specific topic today is on how to be a artist and creator, work professionally, and still have a full-time job that is not doing that stuff. <laughs> uh, because that is my current situation. Uh, it has been the entire time I've been making comics and making graphic novels and while I was making The Sleepover and while I'm making Deepwater Creek, I still have a day job. Uh, and it's not creative uh, like this really at all. Uh, and so I know there's probably a lot of you who are out there in a similar situation and I thought it might be good to share with you my experiences, the things I've learned along the way, and a handful of tips uh, that I think would help you um, in having a nice life balance and be able to produce books at a steady pace. So that's the point of this video. And with that, um, I'll give you a quick intro to why I wanna talk about this. So um, when I, before I began working on Adamsville, uh, I was still working full-time uh, at my job that I'm still at, the company I'm still with. And um, I was obviously looking for contracts, hoping to get a book contract and so on. And it became pretty obvious to me that even if I were to get a contract, there was a, you know, a book contract, the likelihood that I would be able to leave my job and do this full time was pretty low um, because of just what I knew uh, advances were going for and the fact that I hoped to have a family and that I had a family uh, by the time this uh, discussion was really kicking into my head and I knew you know, what needed to happen to provide for them. And so um, I had to kind of come to grips with a few things during that period. And one of which was I could either become really upset and resentful about the situation, uh, or I could roll my sleeves up and decide, you know what, I'm making books. Um, whether they um, provide a living for me or not, this is what I want to do. And I want to do it at a pretty quick pace. I want to put out books pretty regularly. And uh, I want to just make books. I don't want to worry about those other pieces because I can't fully control that, you know? Um, so I kind of got to the business of, of just getting uh, books made. And along the way, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've learned a lot of good things. It's been a mixed bag. Uh, so some of the things I want to talk about will be things that I think have gone well. Some of them will be sort of negative things that I've learned along the way in trying to manage this. And so hopefully all of them together will be something pretty interesting and helpful. So the first thing I want to talk about is how you use your time. Um, the first major tip I would have is use your time well and cut out distractions. And what um, one of the biggest things is that uh, I've learned that you can actually do quite a bit of work in a pretty short period of time if you are able to be concentrated and to not be distracted by the internet or just things happening in and around your house. And so there is a certain level of concentrated effort that must occur um, to remove distractions and set yourself up for success in that way. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's simple things like having uh, social media blockers on my phone and on my computer, trying my very best to uh, block out the internet with apps like Forest, uh, which kind of uh, dulls out web browsers so that I can't go hang out online and do other stuff. And then for the social media blocker and stuff, I'm using a program called Freedom um, that locks my phone down and keeps me out of those programs um, for periods of time that I've set up. So those are some of the basic ones, I think ones that most of us sort of know. But it's also about um, blocking out my work time. And so there's really uh, three sort of periods of my day in which I'm productive on book stuff. The first and primary one is first thing in the morning. I try to wake up around 6 to 6.30 and then work until I have to go to my job. Now, um, on days I have to go into the office, that gets a little more complicated. But on my work from home days, it's very easy. I can work straight up to the time it's time to go to work, stand up, turn around, and I'm at my work desk, which is on the other side of this. So, um, you know, it. but the, the important thing is that I, every morning I'm going to sit down and I'm going to work. And there are times when I don't sleep well enough or I oversleep and I'm waking up, you know, an hour or so later. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. And the point is just maintain that habit. If I only end up having an hour and a half today, as opposed to three hours today, um, sit at the table, do everything I can within that hour and a half, 
that I can for that morning, just keep making progress and try to remove as many distractions as possible. I'm also preaching to the choir here because I know how difficult this is, but I, I'm convinced that if I could be um, really focused for those two hours, two, three hours, uh, I would get basically all the work done I need to get done on a daily basis done so that I can track towards my completion goals and my deadlines for whatever project it is that I'm working on. So really focus on your time, cutting out distractions. I highly recommend the book Deep Work by Cal Newport if you've never read it. Um, he goes through a lot of principles on distraction. Uh, and again, preaching to the choir, I should probably revisit it myself because I've seen the fruit of it in my life and I don't necessarily do the best job of living up to all of it. I do an okay job, but I could do way better. So that's my first tip. The second tip is I strongly recommend that you write your entire book first. Now I understand that um, a lot of creators have different ways of going about this. So I don't want to be too dogmatic about this principle. The, the point is not that you have to write a complete draft that you're hundred percent on board with and you love and everything is great and the draft is complete. Although if you can do that, that's amazing. My own personal process that I found is that um, the writing process is a pretty amorphous thing, um, meaning that sometimes it goes quick, sometimes it goes slow. Sometimes I throw out entire sections while I'm in the middle of production and the draft that I thought was good, I determined it wasn't, I throw it out. And it's just this cycle, right? This back and forth cycle. So I think that's just true and um, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I do think is really important is that you get at least a few drafts in of this book, whether it be a really detailed synopsis, a complete draft or two of the story. And the reason is um, kind of twofold. One, your story should be everything in any book you make. Um, you want to make sure your story is great. And especially if you're an artist like myself, I'm always fearful of my desire to jump past the writing phase so that I can be drawing pages and making art because that's what I'm so used to. It, but when you're making a book, your story is so important. I mean, it's what will make your story stand out, stand the test of time and really matter to readers. I don't want to make something um, that is meh. Like people may, people may not love the sleepover, but hopefully it was memorable <laughs> or people, you know, some people probably really love it because I tried to craft a pretty unique story and I worked really, really hard on that story. So don't um, let your story fall away. Let that be the most important thing that you're doing. And as much as possible, try to write an entire draft because this dovetails into to step number three or tip number three, I should say, which is plan your work. And uh, this is tied a little bit into that first point, which is that you want to plan your work time every day. But when you're working on a comic, it goes an additional step forward. The writing phase is so um, subjective, right? Uh, I can write for three, three hours today and only come up with three pages one day and on the next day write 12 pages. It just, it kind of comes and flows. And so when you're writing, so much of the important thing is just make sure you're spending time at the keyboard. If you can do a word count, that's even better. But, you know, writing's just weird that way. But when it comes to pages, it's actually pretty clear how to do the math. Um, if you've got a 30 page comic and it's due within a month, you pretty much got to do one page a day. And if you're able to look at a complete script of your book and notice that, Hey, I've got 180 pages to draw. Um, I've got to carve out the time for this. That means that I need to do uh, a page a day to hit my goal of turning this book in within a year and a half of being finished with this book within a year and a half or whatever the math ends up being. But the important thing is the more um, values you have, the more facts you have or information you have, the better you can plan. And something I mentioned in other videos is uh, I have created a spreadsheet that sort of helps with this process. Um, I can link to it again in the description uh, to watch a video I recorded for Jason Brewbreaker where I walk people through that spreadsheet um, and that you can download and use for yourself. But this is something I use to kind of plan out my work and know how much I got to get done every day. So I recommend it. The, um, the fourth point would be, I think you have to work on becoming efficient as an artist. Now, um, for some, this will be easy for some, it won't. But what I mean by this is what's so important is that you remember that when you're making a comic, you are making 
hundreds of pages in all likelihood if you're making a graphic novel. And people won't spend as much time on those pages as you think they will. And your sort of perfectionist attitude towards your art will most likely go pretty unappreciated by people. And it becomes more important that you deliver on time and that you deliver with a deadline than it does that the work is a masterpiece every time in and out. My opinion on that, because I just believe that what's more important is the finished book, not a masterpiece that um, took me 10 years. Now, I understand there's different schools of thought there, but if the point here is how do you finish books and have a full-time job, you're gonna have to let go of some things and, uh, and do your best with your page and move on from that page and move on to the next one. And one cool thing that happens is if you focus on speed, your quality will suffer some, especially in the beginning. But over time, your, your speed and your quality will begin to pace up with one another and you will notice that there's less of a gap between how quickly you finish something and, and the quality of it maximum to yourself. If you look at um, even my own graphic novels from Adam's Hill 1 all the way up to the sleepover, I was pretty much operating on the same sort of like page a day type scale. And you look at the sleepover and it, oh man, I, I, there's not a page in there I don't feel like I didn't give my best shot to, but I was still maintaining a very steady schedule of like, I have to get this done this many pages a day, we have to turn it in, let's go. So um, focus on speed, focus on becoming efficient, let your art catch up to your speed, your quality, because it will, and you'll get more comics done. And at the end of the day, that's what's really important. You need to finish the book, finish it. So be fast. Um, these are a few more lifestyle habits than they are productive habits, but I think they're really important. Um, the, the first one is to just have a healthy support system around you. Um, it's really important to have people in your life who are aware of the things that you're doing, your goals and are supportive of them. Um, my wife, uh, Viviani was, uh, is amazing. And she's very supportive of everything that I do. Was very understanding of the late nights, especially when I chose to work late at night, as opposed to the morning. She gave me that space that was needed uh, because it was, it was pretty much every night for, you know, uh, years that I would have to sit down and work for a few hours to try to get some stuff done. And she was very supportive and she still is and I couldn't have done any of this without her or my kids or my family or my friends. So um, really uh, strive to have healthy, good relationships that lift you up and don't tear you down because this sort of work is so hard already, uh, hard on you physically, emotionally, and, um, and mentally, spiritually, whatever you want to add there. Um, and having people who believe in you and support you, uh, it can make all the difference. So make sure you have good people around you who are on your side. The, the next tip would be that you rest well. Um, this is something where I kind of learned this lesson the hard way, honestly. Uh, especially early on, I would push myself really hard and I began to notice um, changes in my health. Uh, my anxiety increased. I began gaining a lot of weight. I wasn't um, feeling right. Like I would get dizzy when I was walking because I was working too much. And I was definitely buying into sort of this hustle culture of if I work my butt off harder than everybody else, I'll achieve what I want. And it is true that if you work hard, you will get what you want, but you have to have good boundaries here, um, which is going to actually be my next point, but you need to be able to uh, shut it off and get a good night's rest. You know what your body needs. Um, if your body needs a certain amount of sleep, do your best to try to hit that while still carving aside whatever amount of time you can during the day to accomplish these other things. But you do need to make sure you're taking good care of yourself and resting well. Um, that's one of the reasons why I moved to working early in the morning, because I can go to bed. Um, I, found, I have found that if I work late at night, um, I used to sit down to work on comics around 10, 1030, and I would work generally till like two in the morning. And what I've discovered is that those hours were really difficult for me mentally and physically because I was exhausted from an entire day of work. Um, and then I would go to bed and I'd wake up exhausted because I stayed up late. And it was just the cycle of exhaustion. Um, and I decided to flip it and wake up early in the morning, get as much work as I could then, and then uh, go to bed at like 11. I go to sleep at like 11 o'clock now. Now I wake up at like six, so not that big of a difference. But I found that I'm much, um, better and sharper early in the morning and I'm able to get a lot more work done 
uh, if I can just uh, get myself to wake up a little faster. I am a little bit of a slow waker upper, but once I'm, I'm rolling, I'm usually doing a pretty good job of staying on top of it. So um, do the system that works for you. Find something that works that you feel um, allows you to rest well, but still be productive. And then uh, lastly, um, like I said, this, the last one would be to set good boundaries. Um, look, if you are, your, your relationships in your life matter more than this stuff does. Um, if you're a part of a church, your church matters tremendously. You should be there. If you're a part of um, a family and kids and friend groups and whatever else that you're doing, these things are really important. Our connections with people are really important. And to sacrifice them uh, on the altar of our creativity, I don't think is wise. Um, it Obviously, our work needs to be really important, but I think people are more important. So uh, for me, that means that to the best of my ability, I'm not working when I'm around the kids, unless we're like all sitting at the table doing some drawing together or something. I try to be like, when I'm done with work, I'm done with work and you're my attention. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they're like, hey, let's sit down and work, dad. And I'm like, okay. And I bring my page that I'm working on to the table and, and we all sit together and we visit and that's fine too. Um, and there are certainly times within the production schedule where this is not doable. Um, when I get close to a deadline, uh, I have to sit down sometimes and talk to the family and be like, hey, you know, kids for, uh, a month or two, this is going to be really tight and you're going to see me working a lot more than I used to. Um, and it will be for a short period of time, but we're going to finish this book and it'll be awesome. And usually what that means is uh, I just take my iPad and if we're watching something on the couch together, I'm drawing or if we're uh, sitting at the table drawing, I'm drawing the book. It's usually still very communal. I try to be around them uh, and uh, just try to make sure that as best I can, that when work is done, work is done and I'm with my family. So um, make sure you're carving aside some time for people. Obviously, I think you want to try to be very consistent with your work, but you need to make sure that um, you don't forsake those relationships because that stuff's really important. Um, and ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, my last sort of statement I would make, and this isn't really a step, I'm going off the cup a little bit here from the list I created. Um, listen, if you want to make books, just go make books. I know for at least me personally, there was a huge hang up and a feeling of failure because I wasn't doing it full time like I wanted to. You know, when ever since I was in third grade, this is the thing I wanted to do. I wanted to make comics full time. I, that was the job I wanted. Um, and, you know, that just didn't happen. Uh, the good news is I actually really love what I do for a living too, um, with, you know, my aforementioned day job. I really love what I do. Um, and that's awesome and tremendous as well. But especially early on, I wrestled a lot with that feeling of, man, have I failed? Have I let down that third grade kid? Um, and the biggest thing I learned from that was, I'm only failing if I'm not doing it. What I mean by that is, whether it's your day job or not, you can't control that. You can't control who pays you how much to do this. You can't pay, you can't control whether a publisher wants your book or not. The only things you can control is your ability to make the book, be consistent about it, have a vision for yourself and get the job done. And then after that, it's kind of out of your hands. And so um, for me, that was a big lesson to learn was all I need to do is make sure I make books and let's see where it goes from there. And all I can say to that end is that it has led to a tremendously rewarding life. Um, I love the creative work I do. I feel like I'm able to fit it into my life in a pretty healthy way. It's more and more difficult. It's been difficult working on Deepwater Creek because life is a little bit busier. We've got older kids now. We're kind of running around a little bit more. It's a little tough, but I'll sort it out. Um, but I'm gonna finish the book. Uh, Lord willing, uh, in a reasonable time period. And uh, that'll be great. And um, yeah, so I just encourage you, uh, don't focus so much on, on all that stuff, the financial stuff. Um, focus on making the books uh, and being good at it and getting better at it and improving 
and, um, and becoming efficient and timely and all those things because the biggest thing you need to be able to show a publisher at the end of the day is that you can finish the book, you can finish it at a high quality um, and be a book that people would like. And so uh, these things I think really helped lead me to get to where I am today. So I hope that stuff was helpful. Um, those are my tips. And uh, I do have like a very brief article that I wrote about this on my blog. Uh, I'll, I'll click, I'll put a link to it in the description as well. Um, but if you haven't yet, I'd love for you to sign up for my email list. I will occasionally uh, send out new free resources or discussions about, you know, comic stuff or short stories or something. I don't know. Just sometimes I might throw something in there for free for all y'all. And I'll also let you know of any major updates on my books. Um, I hope you'll give The Sleepover a chance if you haven't. I'd love to hear what you think of it. I appreciate your time. Please get out there and make your stuff. Uh, don't let it hold you back. Find a way to be healthy and productive. Um, and I can't wait to see the books you're making. I'd love to see it if you feel like sharing it with me. I'll talk with you all soon. Thank you so much. Bye.